Hello everyone, uh, been a while, again. So I've been playing the Black Ops 6 beta since it came out, and I figured rather than doing what I usually do, where I basically just turn on OBS and then just start waffling on about what comes to mind, uh, I actually took notes while playing the beta, and I'm gonna give my own sort of review and thoughts and whatnot about the game. Going to the very beginning of the game, the way you have to launch the game, it's, okay, I know it's because it's in the beta, but it's so annoying. You have to launch the Call of Duty app, you have to wait for it to load to the Modern Warfare 3 COD HQ. You have to go down, go into Black Ops 6, wait again for it to somehow launch Black Ops 6, and then wait for that to load, and then you can play the game if it doesn't ask you for an update. So yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I know that's because like shared assets or whatever, it like calls bring the file size down, but man, it's so inconvenient. If they got rid of the whole COD HQ thing, I really would not complain. But finally into the game, this is only an issue for like the first hour of the game, so I'm not gonna dwell on it for too long, but there was a horrible matchmaking problem. You literally just could not find the game because the servers were like losing it. They were completely overloaded. I remember just losing my mind over this on stream. But stream actually looks perfect. There's like no drop frames whatsoever, no lag. Well, no lag besides whatever's happening on my computer. They just reset? But whatever. It's not a problem anymore. Who cares? Now the menus, I don't have a full opinion on the menus yet because obviously I've only played for like three days. But one thing I will say is it's absolutely an improvement over whatever the fuck we've been dealing with for the last two years. It is so much better. The verticality, it's just, it's just the way it's meant to be, you know? Like, it just makes sense. Back to the matchmaking, though. Anytime a game's over, you still automatically disband a lobby. Which, I mean, at this point, like, I've kind of just given up on the whole skill-based matchmaking lobby disbanding fight. Like, it's not a fight that can be won. I don't think Activision are going to change their minds on this one. So, it's kind of just whatever at this point. Now, on to the game itself. Finally. The movement got here. I love it. They nailed it. It's so fun. Like, it's just... And anytime I'm playing a video game that's not Black Ops 6, I'm like, man, I wish I could move like it was Black Ops 6. It is so much fun. Maybe the one negative thing I can think of is probably just me imagining myself playing it. It probably wouldn't feel as good on keyboard and mouse. Just because it's very, it's very like analog stick oriented kind of. I don't know, it's the only way I could really say it. But damn, it's good. Although, I do have one gripe about it. Why is there tax sprint? Just why? What's the point? Why would you have tax sprint? which only goes one direction. If the whole point of your movement system is to go in all directions, I don't, I just do not understand why you would add tax sprint into this game. I say remove tax sprint, make all the sprint the same speed as tax sprint, and then life will be okay. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Obviously, this is a beta, so it's not very stable. Even besides the crashes, which I'll get to after this, I had a bug on the PC version of the game where I'd load in and like the entire thing would be a black screen. Well, am I loaded in? What? It's doing it again! I'm literally in the game. But like, I'd be in the game. Like, all the sounds would work. If, if you press the pause button, and you look at the challenge, in the background, you can sort of see the gameplay there. But like, it's all a complete black screen. You can't see anything. There's no, you, there's no like, HUD. Nothing like that. It's just, why? You have to restart the game when it happens. And it's just so weird. I never have to deal with it on Xbox, though, so. Maybe it's a PC thing as a whole, maybe it's just my PC. I don't know, but it's just something I felt like mentioning. But back to the elephant in the room, the crashes, they are obscene. They happen to me so often. They didn't happen to me today while I was recording, thankfully, or last night, but don't quote me on that. There might, there might have been a crash last night, I just forgot. But I remember the game crashing constantly and it was pissing me off so bad. Like you'd be popping off for once and then boom, entire game freezes, locks up, and then you're back to your Xbox screen. It's just, whatever, they'll probably fix it, so. The me shield mechanic is one of the highlights of this game for sure. I love all the clips I've been posted to Twitter and whatnot. Yeah, it's a really fun feature. I think it's a great evolution to the execution stuff you can do. I don't know if any other game did this. I think a lot of people refer to like Gears of War doing something like this, but I've never played Gears, so I don't know. Either way, fun mechanic, love it. Good stuff. I like how this mic nail between the victim and the attacker. I think that's awesome. Everyone's already said their thoughts about the Jackal PW, but this is a Black Ops 6 beta video, so I'll also say it. I think it's broken. Yes. Bring in the cheers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So true. Never been said before. Never been done before. No, but seriously, this gun is so broken. It probably will get nerfed to shit. I, there, there has been like a sort of track record of broken guns and betas especially treyarch betas i think it was the milano in the black ops cold War beta that was just 
unreal. I don't see it staying broken. Speaking of the Jackal, um, a lot of people say that the TTK of this game is not great. Like, it's too fast. Some people say it's too slow, but those people are insane. Some people say it's too fast. Well, I can kind of see it. It is... It does seem faster than Modern Warfare 3. I disagree that it's too fast on the sole purpose that the movement is so quick. If you had the Modern Warfare 3 TTK or something slower than that for the movement, it would be like impossible to counter the movement. It, like everyone would just be like a sponge, like floating around all over all over the place. It'd be like killing a bat in Minecraft if the bat had like 100 HP. It'd be like Halo gameplay. Personally, I think the TTK is perfect, but I feel like a lot of opinions are also skewed because everyone's using the Jackal and the Jackal just kills so quick. They did tweak the aim assist. I This is pretty crazy. It's still kind of broken, but less so. One thing they did was they like made us like, I think it's the exact numbers. If you're 2.8 meters or less away from a player, there is no aim assist. It turns it off completely. But everyone's saying that's like a new thing, but apparently Cold War also had that, but it was like so low. It was like 1.5 meters or something. It was so low that like just no one noticed it. So nobody knew it was there. Yeah, beyond that, there's still a decent amount of rotational aim assist. It's still pretty broken, but I have a good fix for this. I say nerf the aim assist, right, which is obvious. But then, you can't compete against keyboard and mouse, they're so accurate. And while that's true, you should have input-based matchmaking by default. X Defiant has this, I know, don't laugh, right? I said X Defiant, right? But seriously, it has it on by default, and that was probably one of my favorite parts of this game. So like, no matter what like the input device you use, you're like basically guaranteed to get into the lobby with that input device. Only. And I think that's pretty cool. I think they should have that in Call of Duty. We're gonna quickly talk about sniping. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert on sniping. I'm not. Uh, but from what I've tried, it's kind of slow. It reminds me a lot of Modern for 2019 sniping. Hitting a shot is really satisfying. I, I, I'd argue more so than Modern for 2019 sniping. But it, besides that, it feels a lot like it. Well, look, I don't like the Cold War snipers mostly because of how broken they are and like how annoying they are to play against. I think the sniping should be more like Cold War sniping, but slightly faster ADS more sway and well, well i say more sway but like less sway than what we have now but more than cold war and flinch when you get shot because i i mean maybe it was there for snipers in cold war but i sure as fuck didn't feel it yeah i don't know i'm, I'm not an expert on this i originally noted down that the pc performance kind of sucks i have a 2060 for the record so it's obviously gonna not be great but i tried it again without live streaming on obs and it really doesn't run that bad on the lowest settings I do have to play on lowest settings to like get actually decent performance, but it pushes the hell out of this PC. It sounds like it's dying when I play this game. Usually your GPU should hover around the high 70s to like 81 max. Anything higher than that goes from like worrying to like disasters. And for me, it's like 84 to 85. It's not disastrous. I think I can definitely play at 84 to 85 temps, but like it's a little worrying especially since modern for three never went that high i did opt to play on the series x instead it is locked at 60 i i know we can do locked 120 even at 1080p with like hmi 2.0 my monitor is ancient and has hmi 1.4 and my fucking elgato capture cards from like 2014 so good luck with that so it's gonna it's gonna be capped at 60 no matter what for me but i mean shit dude i play legacy cards all the time at least when i decide to record which is never but Whatever, I have experience, okay? And I'm kind of used to Lock 60, and honestly, it's perfectly fine enough for me. I don't know, maybe for the main game, I'll switch to PC again. But I guess we'll have to see. Also, a funny thing is, I, I turned on in, like, the sort of telemetry settings, which is, like, the stuff on the top left, in this case. I, turn, I turned on show FPS on my PC. That's not an option on console, but since it carries over some of your settings, actually, I think it carries over, like, basically all your settings that are available, it still shows the FPS on the Series X, which is absolutely hilarious, because I don't think any games do that on console, and I'm pretty sure it's completely unintentional in this case, but it just does it. So that's really funny. I guess that makes like digital foundries work a lot easier. So you can see from the gameplay, it's a consistent lock 60. I think I saw it dip to 59 one time, and I didn't even notice it in gameplay. Probably because it was kill cam. I guess speaking of kill cam, in every mode except search and destroy, the final kill cam is now best play. And hot take, everyone, hot take. Prepare for a hot take. I don't really care. Um, yeah, it's kind of whatever, honestly. I don't really have an opinion. I just, I just do whatever, man. I'm sure there's like an older video of me saying, if they don't have final kill cam in a new Call of Duty, I will shit my pants. But I mean, look, man, I just don't care, okay? That's all, I'll just leave it at that. You now have a separate melee slot in your class. 
and that's wicked. That's so sick. I love that. I don't have much else to say that. That's like really good. <laughs> There's a kill she called the Watchdog Halo, which basically flies around and it like pinks people, but also shoots people a decent amount. And it does hella damage and it can kill you really quickly. People get it all the time. It, it's like so common in my lobbies. It's insane. And that's not even like inherently the problem. The problem is, at least in a bit, I know for a fact they're going to have this in the game. There's no launchers. As of weekend one, where the level cap is 20, there are no launchers you can unlock up to level 20. I don't know if there's going to be until level 30. I hope there are, so I can shoot down those fucking things. But right now you can't, and that's really annoying. So if someone summons a watchdog kilo, you gotta just waste all your like AR or like SMG or Jackal PDW ammo on it to shoot it down. And you'll probably get shot by someone else in the process. They brought back medals. Hooray! I don't really have much to say about medals, but I think they're pretty cool. They added a mode called Kill Order, which is basically a VIP mode. I think it's pretty fun. It's nothing crazy, really, but I I, I like it. It's a nice mode. It's a, it's like an extra dimension of TGM, basically. All right, fuck it. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the maps, which are... <sighs> I didn't want to say this. They're mediocre. They're just not... Great, but also Cold War had pretty shit launch maps. I feel like a lot of people had like way too high expectations after playing Modern for 2 and Modern for 3 for two separate years. When they launched, they were both horrific, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. Skyline, which is like playing inside some, of the, some sort of like mansion, I think, is definitely the best map of the beta. It's kind of small, but it's not like that small. I think it's perfectly fine in size, in my opinion. I'm a fan of like the hallway, which is like right in the middle of the map, basically, but like still elevated. I'm a fan of the map. I think it's nice. Hot tech incoming. Derelict. Second best map of the beta. I said it. I think it's overhated. I think it's okay. I think it's fine. I think it's a fine map. A lot of people say it's worse than Scud, which I'll get to later. But I mean, I just don't think it's that bad. I think it's okay. Rewind is, it's a little too open, but it's okay, I guess. I played worse. Now Scud is worse. It's really, really bad. I fucking hate this map with all my heart. It feels like a Vanguard map. Ugh, it's horrific, actually. Like, it just does not even feel like a Treyarch map. Like, I just do not believe that Treyarch made it. I'm gonna miss where the other COD studios just sort of sabotage them into putting it in. Cause like, there's no way a Treyarch designer could come up with that. Yeah, those are the four core maps available in weekend one of the beta. They said there's gonna be eight maps in the beta. So I think they're gonna put in different maps for weekend two, which I'm excited to see those. I hope they're better. Now the face-off maps. See, I wasn't that disappointed in the core maps because I was kind of expecting some pretty mid launch maps, but like Cold War had some amazing face-off maps. Like I, I, I'd spent hours on those maps and they were just so, they were just pure fun. Like, they were amazing. The Black Ops 6 face-off maps, they're just like, I don't know, man. Pit, I mean, I, I, it's kind of grown on me, I will admit, like Pit specifically. I sort of like that the claustrophobic angle of it, but I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's not that great. And Gala just kind of sucks. Cause like, it's, it's just like too open, you know? It's massive and there's just too much like open space. I'm just not a big fan of it. The spawns suck. The spawns are really bad. But also they're always bad in the betas and usually Treyarch fixes them for the final game. So that's all I'm going to say about them. They brought back Winter's Circle from Black Ops 3, which is basically at the end, you get to like emote with your skin and shit. A lot of people are pretty happy about it. I'm kind of just, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but also kind of don't care. If, if it was my way, I would have done it the Black Ops 2 style, just display the scoreboard for five seconds and then go back to the main menu. But whatever there's really not much else to say i kind of went through all my notes it's way quicker than i expected that's all the thoughts i really have for weekend one of the beta i might do another video on weekend two just to say what i think about that um yeah see you guys in another three months